Hello again, this is the second part of our tutorial about crystal field theory. I hope you remember the important diagram from last time. We said that a free metal ion, for example copper 2 plus in the video, raise up in energy under the influence of an electric field from negatively charged ligands. And the d orbitals of the metal, they lose their degeneracy and split up in two parts, 2 over 3. And this energy difference is responsible for the absorption of light. Electrons can go from the lower level to the higher level by absorbing visible light. And therefore we get the color of the complex. So the color comes from the fact that one electron in the lower state under the influence of visible light will go into a higher state and in this way absorb light. And the energy of the light corresponds to the energy difference we have in the crystal field splitting. What is the actual energy of the electron? When we look at this diagram, we can say that the metal D electrons are at the zero level, the so-called Berry center. Under the influence of the ligands, these three orbitals go down in energy. So if we have this system with only one electron, the so-called crystal field stabilization energy would be one time, now careful, minus 2 over 4 delta O. This is the so-called stabilization energy that the system has compared to the free ion. Okay, minus 2 over 5 of course, delta O. Now if we have more electrons, like in the D3 case, these electrons will be in the lower levels and then this energy will be 3 times minus 2 over 5 delta O or minus 1.2 delta O. When we have 4 or more electrons, then the situation becomes more complicated. For four electrons, D4 case, we can have two configurations. Do you remember? We have so-called high spin case, where the electrons distribute over all orbitals. In this case, the crystal field stabilization energy is three times minus two over five delta O plus one times plus three over five delta O. So that means minus six over five delta O plus three over five delta O. So altogether minus three over five delta O. This is the crystal field stabilization energy in the four electron case and when we compare to three electrons this energy is higher in other words this system is not as stable as the one that has only three electrons but for dc4 we have also another case that could be low spin means this energy difference is so high that the electrons prefer to stay in the lower level. Okay, what is the crystal field stabilization energy now in this case, low spin case? We have one, two, three, four electrons in the lower state. Okay, but now 
These electrons are not the same as before because two of them has to be put together in one orbital and we know that the electrons don't like this. We have to put extra energy to bring these two electrons together. That means we have one time we have to put pairing energy, positive, a pairing energy called P into the system. So this is minus 8 over 5 delta O plus P. Now it depends on the value of delta O and of P, which configuration is better for D4. Because now right now we cannot distinguish which one is better, this one or the case before. We have to know the values of delta O and P to decide which configuration is better for a special D4 case. And that's what we are going to do right now. How do we calculate the energies? Hopefully you remember from physics that the energy of an electromagnetic wave, any wave, not only light, is H multiplied by frequency mu or h multiplied by speed of light divided by lambda wavelength. This is the energy formula for every electromagnetic wave including visible light. Now h and c are constants. They are always the same. That means we can say the energy is proportional to 1 over lambda. If we have a short wavelength, we have high energy. If we have a long wavelength, we have low energy. So that's therefore, in spectroscopy, we prefer to express energy in form of 1 over lambda, not to calculate in joule with you by using these constants, because we get very complicated numbers in this case. So in spectroscopy, not in physics, we use as an energy, instead of energy, we use the so-called wave number. Wave number. And the wave number is called mu bar, not confused with the frequency, please. And this mu bar is equal 1 over lambda. But now careful, in unit centimeter power minus 1, not in nanometer power minus 1. Okay, typical example, if we have light wavelength 700 nanometer, that means that would be red light, long wavelength. That means the wave number is then not 1 divided by 700, but 10 power 7 divided by 700 units centimeter minus 1. Because I have to calculate from nanometer to centimeter. And when I calculate this, I get a value about 14,300 centimeter power minus one. So the wavelength 700 corresponds to a wave number or an energy of 14,300 centimeter minus one. Okay, so now in our energy diagram, we can express the delta O and the pairing energy both in centimeter minus one. So I give you an example, delta O in our case would be 20,000 and the pairing energy 17,000 centimeter minus one. If we have this information from the experiment, we can actually calculate the crystal field stabilization energy in centimeter minus one. And we can compare high spin and low spin configuration. So in the D4 case, high spin, Again, the four electrons are in different orbitals. C, 
so high spin the crystal field stabilization energy is minus 3 times 2 over 5 delta O plus 3 over 5 delta O that means minus 3 over 5 delta O now we can substitute this 20,000 is minus 60,000 divided by 5 delta oh sorry not delta O centimeter minus 1 of course and this is minus 12,000 centimeter minus 1 don't forget the minus so this is the stabilization energy of the high spin complex now we compare to low spin low spin complex now we take this electro from here down and pair it with another one so the energy now is four times 2 over 5 delta o but now we have to consider the pairing energy for these two electrons which is positive and has the value 17,000. So in this case, we can substitute and get the value in centimeter minus one. Minus eight times two, 160,000 divided by five centimeter minus one plus 17,000 centimeter minus one is, now I need a calculator okay this is minus 15,000 centimeter minus one so again the high spin complex all electrons have the energy minus 12,000 low spin all electrons have the energy minus 15,000 which one is the better one now we remember the electrons want to be low in energy not high in this case, that means the low spin complex is better for the electrons. It has lower energy, so they can predict the D4 complex with these two measured values for delta O and P. In this case, the low spin complex, all electrons are here, is energetically preferred over the high spin complex. So now I want you to consider not to confuse this energy crystal field stabilization energy for all electrons not confuse this please with the energy of the light that is absorbed the energy that is absorbed by putting one electron from here to here is the same for a whole low spin or a high spin the delta O is the same so when we talk about energy absorbed, we talk about the energy needed to bring one electron up here. And this energy corresponds to the 20,000. Okay, so that means light that is absorbed here, this light, we can calculate the wavelength and therefore the color of this complex, the wavelength that corresponds to the 20,000. Okay, remember this is nu bar, one over lambda. But if we have lambda in nanometer, we can say is 10 power seven divided by lambda in nanometer. Okay, we resolve for lambda is 10 power 7 divided by wave number 20,000 and this is in nanometer okay again I need calculator to find this value well actually you should not need a calculator this would be 500 nanometer so again this complex with a delta O of 20,000 centimeter minus one will absorb light with a wavelength of 500 nanometer. Now we have to check from the color chart what color is 500 nanometer and then we have to check what is the complementary color to this. And then we can find out the color of the complex. 
Okay, I hope this will help you a little bit for understanding energy calculations. And I invite you to watch part number three when we look at different other complex configurations and geometries. Thank you very much and see you later.